This could be a similar scenario where we think the worst is going to be over here at some time in the near future. However, in the stock market, it's priced in already. And then we start to see a rise finally because that was peak fear. Yo, how's it going, you guys? It's Marcus Graber. So Tesla had an interesting move to the downside on Thursday. This was Thursday. This is a stock tweet message that I made over here. If you guys want my messages in real time, and also if you wanted to contact me on Discord, definitely check out my stock tweets account. Check out Twitter. And also in the description, I also have a link to the Discord. So check out those. And so we can see here that Tesla, we didn't break the 200-day moving average at this point moment in time, but we know now that we did break it on Thursday, actually. And I was commenting, basically, that we broke the 200-day moving average and closed below it one time, actually, in 2020, back when we had the pandemic scare in terms of, of how bad that would be and a complete market sell-off, and we closed below it one single day. And so we did that exact same thing, actually. If we jump forward here, we can see that this was a message that I posted later on Thursday, showing that, yes, we did close below it, actually, just like we did over here. And this is also an interesting trend that coincides with the lows of the day on Thursday. This is to speak that maybe we hit an interesting low on Thursday. And basically, if Tesla finds a bottom, speculative growth stocks could also finally find its bottom. So was today the day was what my question was. And on Friday, we had a pretty nice rebound. So we know that. And also, full disclosure, I'm long Tesla and averaged up since my cost basis is fairly low. And I bought in at $564.55. Or I added to my position there. So again, check out my stock Twitch account. And let's get into this. But before we get into this video, if you get any value from this content, don't forget to put a smash down on the like button. It really helps this content, helps other people see this video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to this channel. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're into cryptocurrency, I am a partner with BlockFi. You can get up to 250 in a Bitcoin bonus. This is the payout structure right here, how much you put in and how much you can get in Bitcoin for free. And then also, I really like to take advantage of the 8.6% APY that you can get on stable coins. And without further ado, let's look at Tesla stock over here and break down some of the things that we're seeing right now. So we know that we broke down from this pretty important trend. And when we broke down here, we broke down pretty hard, just like straight down. Now we're at a pivotal moment here. We see that on Friday, we had a nice bounce. Was this the low here? It is converging with a few different interesting areas. That's one thing that we are paying attention to. A few different lines, one from the downside. And I think this downtrend is pretty important. This is the new trend that I'm looking at here. Something like this. The upside trend, I would draw it a little bit differently. But basically, this is the bigger trend that we are trading in. And I'm kind of expecting a move to the upside, finally. We could move to the downside. If we do move to the downside, I would expect a hit over here and then fill the gap over there. Those are my downside targets here, especially if we break down this pivotal point here. The early indication of a breakdown would be a close again below the 200-day moving average. So pay attention to that. That's an early indication here. And again, these two trend lines here would give an indication that a confirmation basically that we are probably going to the downside here. So that's what I'm looking at there. This is something that I could remove, honestly, this uh, trend line here. However, I'm leaving the trend line, this downward trend line here, because and I'm talking about uh, this line here, right? Because I think that actually, when we go to the upside, if we go to the upside pretty quickly, I think we would see resistance on this line. This was once a line of support, support here, support here, support here for some time until we broke through. Now it's going to be acting as resistance. I don't know if we're going to even get near this line, but if we do, we act as resistance. Because the first, and the reason why I'm saying we might not actually get to this line is that when we start to rise here, we're probably going to find resistance first at this line right here. So keep that in mind. This is the channel that we are trading in. Once we break past this channel here, then is when we could potentially interact sometime with this trend line that's going to the upside here. So keep that in mind. That's why I'm looking at Tesla. I'm going to clean up some of these lines in the next video. And let's take a look at the S&P 500. Interestingly, we thought in our last update, which was right over here, we thought that basically we would go to the upside, fill this gap, 
pretty quickly and then get rejected off here and go to the downside. That's what we thought and talked about in our last update. However, instead of filling the gap first, we went to the downside first. And then now we're probably going to fill the gap maybe tomorrow or the next day. That's kind of what I'm thinking. What does this mean, though? I initially thought, again, that this line was going to act as resistance first. But now that we went to the downside first, is it simply going to go here and get rejected off of this line now to go to the downside again? That's actually very possible. Like on a broader perspective here, if this was a false breakout and, and then we just went back to the downside, we could potentially be trading within this trend for quite some time. That's one scenario. And if we can't get above this trend line, that's probably what might actually happen. But we have this vision that we think that we're going to break above this trend line and we're probably going to break above this trend line soon. I think maybe tomorrow we don't. I don't think we do. I'm not sure if tomorrow's going to be green or red but eventually maybe we hit this trend line and then finally break out above this trend line here that's kind of what we're thinking and because we are thinking that we're going to see some higher prices and when we get to the higher prices eventually and then we're going to have a basically a retracement all the way back to 400 and a little bit below 400 actually that's when we're going to fill these gaps from over here that's kind of what we're thinking that's going to happen We'll see what actually ends up happening, but that is our bias for the S&P 500. So we lean still a little bit more bullish at the moment. Let's take a look at Palantir. Palantir is doing some interesting things here. This is looking a little bit bullish here. We can see that this is a nice uh, energy buildup here due to the upside. It doesn't look like a bearish flag or anything like that to me at the moment. So this looks like we might be gaining momentum to the upside. This line here, very important. Once we break this, we're going to break out to the upside. And the minimal upside play I would think that we'd see here because basically I think this is a counter reversal trend here and basically the minimal move is basically hitting this upper trend line that's the minimal move that I see so basically we hit this get rejected go to the downside that is the minimal move I think we're going to see something more than just that. I think we're going to see a breakout to the upside. I think that we're going to see a relief in growth speculative plays. I don't know if this is going to be long lasting. I just think we're going to go to the upside a little bit more and then probably have a significant pullback because I don't think that this, I, I don't actually know. We don't know if this is going to be the pivotal play and the pivotal moment in growth stock history that we start to just continue to go up and have that bull trend continue for the speculative growth plays. We don't know if that's the case here. It's similar with Tesla stock. We don't know if it's the case there as well. But basically, this is a pivotal moment that we think we're going to start to go to the upside. Now, again, we don't know if we're going to hit this, get rejected, go a little higher. We think more likely a little higher before retracing and eventually we will have that actual pivotal moment that takes us to the upside. But I'm not counting this out currently. This could be peak fear. This could be the bottom. This could be when inflation is at its peak. Because if you look back at the pandemic, basically, one thing to keep in mind here, people, including myself, I'm not sure actually how many people thought this, but myself, I definitely thought that the worst of the cases were going to happen in maybe May. This was based on like some scientists and people who are thinking about that kind of thing, bio biologists and things like that. So I thought maybe in May was going to be the worst part of the pandemic. Therefore, maybe that would correspond to the worst part of the stock market. But no, the stock market peaked in March, right? In terms of the peak fear, in terms of the worst case scenario. So it's interesting. We had basically, it happened earlier than people thought, right? Earlier than people thought. This could be the same scenario where basically, yes, this is seemingly early, right? We got the inflation data. We got all this negativity and inflation is the thing that's driving fear. The 10-year inflation, it's all related a little bit to inflation with rates hiking. They're, fear, they're we're afraid of inflation going up and then having to raise the rates, right? Having the Fed to raise the rates. So this is the fear. And with the inflation CPI data that came out, this could be a similar scenario where we think the worst is going to be over here at some time in the near future. However, in the stock market, it's priced in already. And then we start to see a rise finally because that was peak fear. So we can't count this out as this being the pivotal point. And this is, there's actually a very 
good chance of it being the pivotal point. I would give it a 30% chance that this was actually the pivotal point that we've been waiting for, for a reversal from money to go from value back into growth, or not necessarily a full switch, but at least money to stop bleeding from growth speculative plays. We'll see if that actually plays out. Well, anyway, I hope you guys got some value from this content. If you haven't already, smash the like button, subscribe to this channel for more content like this, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And keep in mind that none of this is financial advice. This is just some random guy on YouTube drawing some stick figure lines on a chart talking to you guys.